excited about the word that we're going to share with you today. It's a word of hope, one that I believe that God is going to use to encourage your heart in this season of uncertainty. What I want to ask you to do is first and foremost, if you haven't already, make sure that you're sharing this, this broadcast. You can host a live watch party and share this even afterwards. We want to engage as many people as we can, and we want people to know that you are engaged through it. How can you do that, you ask? Well, I have the answer. Here it is. You can hashtag this. So hashtag LCCIL. It's short for Little Chapel Church, Illinois. Again, hashtag LCCIL. Here's what we want you to do. Take a picture of your family watching the live stream, engaging in worship, and then make posts throughout the week. Make posts like, so thankful that we were able to engage with our family in, 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 in our online community. Hashtag LCCIL. Guys, I'm excited that we can still be connected even though we're not together. God bless you. I hope this word ministers to you. Let's go for Jesus. Amen. Good morning, Little Chapel Church family and those of you that are watching us online today. We are so glad you're with us. This is going to be a fun morning. We want to welcome you. Even though we are gathering digitally, we would still love to give you information about Little Chapel if this is your first time involved in one of our encounter services. So here's what you can do. You can take out your phone and text the word welcome to this number, 618-777-6779. We will give you lots of great information about what you can expect from Little Chapel Church. We also want to let you know that because of the recent staycation that we've all been put on, our church offices will be closed through April 7th. But we still have a couple ways that you can connect with us. First of all, we'll be monitoring our text number, the number I just gave you, 618-777-6779. You can text us with any needs if you have prayer requests, or you can also connect with us on social media. You can message us. We're going to be checking all of those things, so make sure and stay connected with us. We are here for you. Also, we're sad to announce that we have to cancel Extravaganza this year. Again, because of everything that's going on, we want to keep people safe. So we will not be doing Extravaganza. Make sure you let your friends and family know. And last but not least, we want to give you the opportunity to continue worshiping through giving. We have several ways that you can still give even though you're not here in person. First of all, you can go to our website, littlechapelchurch.com. You can also download our app, which is a great resource during these days. We, we are confined to our homes to stay connected. You can listen to old sermons. You can check out everything we have going on. So make sure you download the app. You can give through the app. You can also text to give. We have this great feature where you can text this number, 77977, and you just need to put in the keyword, it needs to be L-C-C-I-L. So text L-C-C-I-L to the number 77977. Or if you like the good old-fashioned way, you can mail your checks in. We are still receiving mail to our address, which will be on the screen. We really want to give you the opportunity to stay connected in all the ways we have. And we want you to be able to worship through giving. Thank you for being with us this morning. We hope you enjoy what we have to give you today. It's going to be a great service. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our Sunday morning encounter. 
We're going to get ready and worship with you.
know in this time that there is nothing that you can't do. And so we bless you. Lord, we give you honor. We give you glory for what you're going to do in this nation.
never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop.
times like this of uncertainty that our hope is secured in the foundation that is Jesus Christ. The name that is above all names. The name that still, hear that, let me say it again. The name that still carries all authority in heaven, over the earth, and below the earth. It's in times like this, friends, it's in times like this, all of you who are watching in these moments, that we are pulled back to this place of absolute, certain hope that Jesus, in the midst of chaos, that Jesus, in the midst of uncertainty, that Jesus, in the midst of whatever you face, that Jesus alone is the anchor of hope for our soul. He alone. He alone is who we place our trust in. We don't look to outside sources. We look to the one who came and gave everything to pull you from death to life, to bring you from being lost to being found. It's all about Jesus. So in this moment, right in your homes, in your bedrooms, with your family, just come together one more time. And let's just sing this out. Moms and dads, sing it proud in front of your kids. Kids, show your mom and dad how you can sing. Death could not hold you. Death could not hold you. Yes. name it is. The name of Jesus. So Jesus, we come to you in this moment. Jesus, every family, wherever they are, every individual, wherever they find themselves, we come to you in this moment. I thank you, Father, that you are meeting people, that your presence is resting strong with your people that those who need peace are met with the Prince of Peace, that those who need healing right now are met in a moment with the one who paid the price that we would be healed. For those who need comfort, I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you bring comfort. It's all in you. You have no rival, no sickness, no virus, no plague, Nothing can stand against you, and you stand before us. Come on, somebody. So, Jesus, we thank you for this time of worship. Thank you that we can lift you up, and we know that your word tells us when you're lifted up that you will draw all men unto yourself. I thank you that in this moment, in this season, you are drawing nations back to yourself because we're looking to you for it's in seasons like this that we realize how hopeless we are. So we look to the one who gives us hope. Thank you, Father, for this time. 
We love you. We thank you. We praise you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Oh, man, wasn't that fun just being able to come together and, uh, and worship? I know this is totally different than what we're, what we're used to, but, um, but I'm also so thankful that we're able to utilize this online format to come together in a, a, a semi-live time where you're able to engage with one another um, while, while worshiping with your families. And, you know, and we've been saying it really these last couple of weeks, but especially this last week, that although we're not coming together as a, as a body in person, there's no reason that revival can't just break out in your homes. And, and, and I honestly believe that God can use this time to help position us exactly where he wants us to be in his presence and, and to be able to lead our families the way that he would call us to. So, guys, I, I'm telling you, I believe that even through these next couple of weeks that we're going to be getting testimonies of lives being transformed, eternities altered. I, I, I believe that, that Jesus is going to show up and people are going to get healed and set free, even through this simple online format. Why? Because Jesus is lifted up. And that's really what this is all about. And I'm excited to transition into the word today. Um, I feel like this week the Lord has has really placed this this in me. It's another one of those things that he's had, that he's been developing all week, really, ever since we kind of knew where we were going to need to go uh, for this weekend. And, and in the midst of all this uncertainty and and honestly, this what, what seems like a mild state of chaos, depending on where you go, if you're, if, if you're going to a place that only has one roll of toilet paper left, right? It gets kind of hectic and crazy. I, I feel like the Lord has given, has given us a word, one word to really hold on to through this season. And I, I feel like it's a word that's directly from his heart. And that's what this is all about today. And, uh, and so as you're there sitting in your family, sitting with your families, wherever it is, watching on your couch or at your uh, uh, kitchen tables or even in your bed, still in your pajamas, praise God that we can do that. But here's the word. Here's the word. The word is hope. Hope is what God wants us to hold on to in the middle of this time. So let's pray over this word and then we'll get right into it. Jesus, I'm thankful. I'm thankful that I am able to connect with my friends and my family and my church right now through your word. I know that there's no distance in the spirit. So right now, Holy One, I pray that you connect our hearts to your heart, that you would just speak your word through, through, through me, that you would just bring revelation to those who are listening, prepare their hearts to receive and their ears to hear so that as your word goes forth as good seed, because that's what it is, and I declare that your word will fall on good ground because that's who they are. I thank you, Father, that when good seed meets, meets good ground, lasting fruit is produced. And so, Lord, let that be. Thank you, Lord, for this time. We lift you up and exalt your name, Jesus. You get all the glory. Amen, amen, amen. All right, I'm going to uh, uh, be sensitive to the time that we have together. We want to make the most of it. So let me go ahead and get going. Psalms 121, uh, verses 1 through 8. A really familiar portion of Scripture, but I think in a, in a season of crazy and a season of uncertainty, when we go back to what's familiar, that's good. How many of you guys would like to just go back to what is familiar <laughs> in this time? Yep, me too. And here's the thing, guys, it won't be long. It won't be long, and, I, and this is the hope I have, that, and that it won't be long until we're able to look back and say, man, that was crazy. Those few weeks were absolutely insane, but God saw us through it. And what he has done, he'll continue to do. Guys, there's hope in this. So back to this familiar portion of Scripture, scripture Psalms 121. I will lift my eyes to the hills from where shall my help come. My help comes from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. He will not allow your foot to slip. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. Isn't that a promise? The Lord is your shade and your right hand. The sun will not smite you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will protect you from all evil. He will keep your soul. The Lord will guard your going out and your coming in 
from this time and forevermore. A few verses I want to highlight uh, just very quickly before we get into the mean to, to the to the main meat of the text uh, where we're going to go. It says that my help comes from the Lord. How many of you know that our source in times like this, in times of, of uncertainty, in times of confusion, guys, we have to make sure that our source is firm. He's firm, but we need to know where to go whenever, the, whenever we're shaken. In seasons of shaking, we need to know that God is our hope. His position does not change no matter how crazy ours gets. Come on, somebody. His position in faithfulness to be there, to be our stronghold, to be the one who covers us in the shelter of his wings, his position does not change no matter how crazy ours gets. So I love the reminder that we have right here is from his word that our help comes from the Lord. He made the heavens and the earth. And we know, we know that we are valuable to him. You are valuable to him. He loves you so much that he is going to protect you and provide and take care of you through this time. The Lord is your keeper. Let's hold on to that promise through this season. He will protect you from all evil. He will keep your soul. He will guard your going out and your coming in. That's a very timely word for this week, isn't it? That in this time where we're, we're, we're being encouraged just to kind of stay uh, at home, having social distance, only doing uh, things of necessity, the promise of God's word is that he is going to guard your going out and your coming in. Guys, as I'm looking at this scripture, we see that it ends with this statement right here. From this time and forevermore. Guys, his faithful he is faithful and his promises are true from this time forevermore. And here's the thing. We're bringing this back to hope. This week as I was praying, uh, uh, the staff and I, as we were together this week, um, every, every day over the, the lunch hour, we would come in here into the main auditorium and, uh, and pray. Just have a time where we would be praying for 45 minutes to an hour and we would just be seeking the Lord. And, um, and one, one day as I was praying, I felt like the Lord showed me a picture. And this kind of is just kind of what he's done in me this whole week. And I saw the Lord. He was handing out golden megaphones, you know, like those big long things that people would, 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 would scream into to amplify their voice. And I saw the Lord handing out golden megaphones. And on the sides of these megaphones were written, was written the word hope. And as I was seeing people that God handed these megaphones to, they were lifting these up and they were proclaiming messages of hope to their world around them, to their families, to their friends. They were using social media not as a platform for fear or discouragement, but they were using it as a platform for hope. And this is what I felt like I heard the Lord speak to my heart. I felt like I heard him say that declarations of hope will calm hearts and settle the land. Declarations of hope will calm hearts and settle the land. Maybe your heart through this last week, these last couple of weeks, have been un, uh, unsettled. Maybe your heart has kind of been, been fluttering with anxiety, fear, and worry. Guys, I want you to know that the Lord is speaking hope over you this day. We're, we're obviously seeing a season where, where our land, our nation, and the nations of the world are unsettled because of what is going on in this time. But I want you to know that God wants to use, wants to use this gift of hope to rise up from the foundations of the earth that he's placing in the hearts and the mouths of his people that as you begin to proclaim hope that hearts will be calmed and the nations will be settled. What a promise that we have to stand on if we hold to his hope. I promise you guys, he's not done. He hasn't finished what he started. Philippians 1.6 says, being confident of this very thing, that he who began a good work in you will carry it out until the day of Christ Jesus. Guys, here's the thing. Jesus is coming. He's coming back, but until he shows up and parts the eastern sky, there is a work that he has began, and he is going to finish that work. So I have hope. I want to quickly just highlight to you some things that hope does. Since we're a people that are just choosing to align our hearts with hope, 
I feel like there's a few things that God just, just placed in my heart to be able to share with you that would hopefully this day and for the weeks to come would just be even today as a seed going forth into a heart ready to hear so that the seeds of hope as the days progress will begin to blossom and bloom and all of a sudden this fruit of hope will be produced from your life. And here's what I love about the fruit that the believer's life produces. How many of you know that this fruit of hope that God wants to produce in your life is not meant for you alone to enjoy? Why is fruit produced? Why does an apple tree produce apples? It's for us to enjoy, right? The fruit of hope that God is going to produce in your life is not just for you. It's for the, your world around you. It's for your family and your friends, your co-workers to be able to come and see, inspect the fruit that's on your tree, pull it, pluck it, and taste and see that the Lord is good because he see, they see you full of hope and they realize there's only one reason you have hope and that's because we have the King of glory. Guys, this is what it's all about. You see, in the times of desperation, we have hope. So what does hope do? The first thing here, if you're taking notes, which I hope you are, because here's the beauty about this, is as soon as you're done watching today, you can just run it back. So touch your, t touch your husband or your wife and tell them, run it back. You can watch it again and take all the notes you want. Um, want to even encourage you right now to start a watch party while you're uh, checking this video out. Just push the little watch party button right here on this feed, and we're just going to watch this together. It's really good stuff. The first thing that hope does is hope will change your perspective. I love how the Word of God paints this reality so clear throughout Scripture. There's so many stories where we see that hope literally flipped the script on perspective for so many people. Whenever you're hope-filled, you don't see things the way that everyone else would see them. Whenever you're full of hope, all of a sudden, the lens through which you see obstacles begins to change. I'm th I think about David, King David, whenever he was just a boy, he was given this word of hope that said he would be a king one day. And on the way, although he had not seen that promise fulfilled, on, the, on his journey toward this promise, towards this hope, he met a giant. While everyone else in the nation, while every other warrior, while every other warrior in the nation saw a giant, David's perspective said, that's just a speed bump on the way to my promise. Come on, somebody. You see, the ability for hope to shift your perspective is a powerful weapon that God wants to place in the hearts of his people today. The walls of Jericho. The walls of Jericho, as, as Israel crossed the Jordan and they came into the city, it would have been really easy to see these walls as barriers to a promise. But the, but the nation of Israel, the warriors of the land, moving in obedience, marching around the city, they didn't see the walls as a barrier. They saw Jericho as the first stop on the way to the fulfillment of God's promise. You see, perspective is powerful whenever you are hoping filled perspective changes when the Israelites were on the the front side of the Red Sea as they had been set free from Pharaoh and all of Egypt from being slaves for 400 years they have now been set free and they were and, 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 and they were following the cloud by day in the fire by night, and it led them to the banks of the Red Sea, and, and, and they're waiting for their next move, and then as they're waiting, they begin to see the dust behind them in the desert rising, and after they, after a while, they begin to hear the, the, the sound of the chariots coming in, putting pressure, right, so, so they're stuck between the sea and the chariots, but what does God do in this moment? God says, listen, yep, these people who are coming, they're coming to put you back into slavery but God is so good and is so able to flip the script on your perspective instead of saying man we're stuck between a rock and a hard place per se no I think that God changed their perspective that allowed the pressure of the enemy to cause them to walk through the Red Sea on dry ground you see God is really good at changing your perspective what a beautiful picture this is that I will describe. We know fast forwarding 
to the birth of a new covenant started because of the cross. The cross that Jesus willingly laid his life down upon and, and literally became the appropriation of our sin. He took the punishment and the shame that you and I deserved. The word says that the cross, if you can see it above me, was what was viewed was viewed as an object of scorn. But a flipped perspective, a new perspective, no longer saw it as something to be scorned. But now we see it as a bridge into a better covenant. Come on somebody. You see, that's what happens when hope becomes alive in your spirit. No longer can you look at things. No longer do you look at things through the lens of hopelessness and fear and worry. But because of the reality of Christ in me, the hope of glory, things begin to change. I'm thankful that hope has flipped the script on my perspective. Come on. Give somebody in your house a high five and tell them hope has flipped the script. Come on. Jesus is so good. Hope flips the script. Hope will change your perspective. Mm. God is so good. Hope has the power to change your perspective because it gives you the right pres prescription. That's what I was trying to say. Hope will change your perspective because it gives you the right prescription. Have you known anybody that they went to the eye doctor because they couldn't see things very clearly. And then all of a sudden, they got glasses. This happened to Tina, uh, my wife, uh, several, several months ago. She was having, you know, some, some things were getting just a little bit fuzzy for her. And, and, and she was like, she's a photographer. She does that. And she was looking at uh, pictures that she was taking. And she was saying, man, there's something wrong with my camera. Man, I can't get, I can't get my camera to focus well. Whenever I'm looking at the viewfinder, it doesn't look like anything's in focus. And so, so she, was, um, she, she thought, you know, just kind of a happenstance thing. She ended up just because she had an opportunity, she went to the, uh, to the eye doctor, and, and the eye doctor started doing what they do, you know, putting those lenses in front of her eyes. And, and then bottom line, she found out that her vision wasn't quite as good as it used to be. And so she got a pair of glasses. She got the right prescription. And now, I mean, she's so thankful. She said, I was about ready to send my camera off and get it fixed. But really, it wasn't the camera. It was my focus. It was my prescription. I didn't have the right prescription. You see, that's what hope does. When hope gives you the right, prescri uh, the right perspective, right, you get the right perspective because hope changes the prescription. God's given us a prescription of hope so that we see things differently. Come on, that's just a good word. I don't care where you are right now. You could be in the bathroom watching this, and that's a good word. Come on, somebody. Oh, man, I'm so thankful for online church. Hey, hey, hope empowers perseverance. I'm not going to have a whole lot of time to go through this, but listen to this verse, something really fun for us all. It says that uh, in James chapter 1, verses 2 and 4, consider it all joy, brethren, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance, and let endurance have its perfect result so that you may be perfect, complete, and lacking nothing. Man, what a promise we have. But how many of you know that sometimes to get to God's promise, you have to go through the process? Come on. The process isn't always fun, but how many of you know the process is necessary? to get where God is to calling you. In order to get to the fullness of what God wants to bring you to, you have to go through that season, through this time called the promise. James, the author of this book, knew that, and he's writing to encourage us. He says, consider it all joy when you encounter trials. Does anybody have that figured out yet? Because if you do, I want you to go live after this, tag me in it, and tell me the secret, because I still have problems counting it all joy whenever my life gets interrupted. Hello. This past week, I, I got to be honest, yep, even though I'm your pastor, I still had problems counting it joy whenever I heard that I couldn't live my life as normal. Guys, I had problems whenever I found out that they were asking that we not meet together as a body. Guys, I had problems with that. We had to prayerfully engage and, and, and say, man, what is the best decision, not based on what we want to do, but based upon the people we care so much about. It's a tough time. And I still haven't mastered this to count it all joy. 
whenever I'm facing hard times, when I'm facing trials. But that word consider, as, as James says, he says consider it. That word means to lead or to go through, to have authority over. So he's saying consider it all joy. What he's really saying is go through it. Lead well through it. You know, there's that old saying that says if you're going through hell, don't stop. <laughs> Come on. And that's kind of what this, is, what this is making mention to. He's saying consider it, right? That word consider means, again, like we talked about before, change your perspective. Change the way you think about it, right? When you are considering something, you're seeing it from all angles. And so James is saying instead of considering the trials, consider the opportunity that you have. Whenever you consider the opportunity to go through it, all of a sudden you'll find the, the power to do so. And I want us to know that trials are temporal. Trials are temporal, guys. What we're facing right now, it will be over soon. It's not going to be like it is today forever. We're going to get past this virus. We're going to get past this, this time of uncertainty. We're going to look back and realize how hard it was. But, guys, it will pass. There's hope in that. There's hope knowing that this trial is a temporal thing. Trials, it doesn't matter what you're facing, it is temporal. Temporal means it is temporary. Now, everyone's temporary looks different. Maybe your trial might last a little longer than my trial. Maybe mine might be lasting a little longer than yours. But the promise is it is temporary. The Apostle Paul realized this in 2 Corinthians 4.17. He says, for our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that outweighs them all. Come on, somebody. How about that promise? And can I just tell you about Paul's light and momentary troubles? Again, man, I, I just want to give us some perspective this day. Here we are. And I'm not making light of the struggle that we have because it's real. We're all being affected by the trials that we are enduring in this moment. It is affecting our day-to-day -day life. I know business owners in this season, you're wondering if you're going to make it through. I promise you, you're going to make it through. Churches, church leaders, we're wondering how long. How long can we sustain this course without having the boat rock too much? Guys, it's just an, it's a real thing. Every single one of us are wondering what this trial is going to produce in the natural. And we're very uptight. We're very worried about what we're facing. It's real. It's real. I'm not, I'm not making light of it. I'm not making small of it. What I am saying is that I, I understand that this is a real thing. Trials are real. Trials are tough. But listen, gain context for, for what Paul is saying. Here is the Apostle Paul. And he is the one saying, our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that outweighs them all. We are, are inconvenienced because we're not supposed to leave our house unless it's necessary. The Apostle Paul was on house arrest. He had been beaten. He had been bruised. He had been put into prison. He had been, he had been ordered not to ever tell about Jesus again. He had been stoned hopefully to the point of death, but it failed. People, mobs rose up to take his life, but he escaped because the church somehow came together and they provided a way. You see, Paul is writing from a, uh, guys, if I can just be honest, Paul's writing after experiencing some trials that most of us cannot relate to. Paul calls his troubles, his trials, light and momentary troubles. Light and momentary troubles. But what are they doing? What are they doing? Hope empowers perseverance. What are these troubles doing? They're producing. They're producing something. They're working for you. 
Paul says they are achieving an eternal glory that will far outweigh them all. This is how good God is, friends. He is so good that he would never allow us to walk through anything that would not somehow produce something that he would get the glory for on the other side. In other words, as I say so often, guys, if it's not good, it's not over. He's working all things for our good. He's a good father. That's what he does. Yes, we're facing some real stuff. But guys, as we hold on to him, as we allow him to change our perspective, as we look to him who is faithful, all of a sudden he brings us to this place that we understand and we see that the testing of our faith is developing something necessary for him to utilize and use on the other side. If this place was full, everyone would be standing and clapping right now because that's what God does. So give someone a high five in your living room and tell them that's what God does. Come on somebody. The testing of your faith develops perseverance. And I'm going to try to close up here pretty soon. I've been talking for 22 minutes. The testing of your faith develops something. It develops perseverance. And the word says that perseverance must finish its work. Why? For you to be made complete, lacking nothing. That's how good God is. He wants you to know that on the other side of this testing, you're going to be more complete. When you remain hope-filled through this season, even though the testing comes, as you keep your eyes and your heart positioned in hope, as, you, as hope begins to speak deep into your spirit and you begin to be the one who proclaims hope, what happens is when the testing comes, although it may come, it is here, it is coming, when on the other side, guys, it's developing something in you that maybe you didn't even know was there. I was in high school, I think I was a junior, I think I was a senior, man, it's getting so long ago. I had a track coach, uh, Coach Carpenter was his name, and, um, and we were at a, a, a neighboring town at a track meet, and, and Coach Carpenter comes up to me and, and he says, T.W., I need you to do something for me. Now, you won't believe it today. But because I don't necessarily have the build of a gazelle. But back in the day, I used to be pretty fleet of foot way back when. Come on, you guys know what that way back when life was. <laughs> in my way back life, I used to be pretty fleet of foot. I used to be pretty fast. And, and Coach Carpenter came up to me and he said, T.W., I need you to do something for me. I said, yeah, Coach, what do you need? He said, I need you to run the opening leg of the 4x400 four relay. If you don't know what that is, very simply, that is one lap around the track, 400 yards, 400 meters. It may not sound like a lot, but the proper way to run this is pretty well at a dead-out sprint. And that is a long way to run when you are not in shape to run it. And Coach Carpenter told me, T.W., I need you to run this race. Our, 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 the guy who was going to run it, man, he's sick, he's not here, so I'm just, I, I need you to run it. And I said, Coach, I haven't, I've never ran that. And he said, T.W., I need you to do it. I said, okay, Coach, I'll do it. So I get up to that starting block the whole time. I'm just thinking, this is going to stink. I wasn't ready for it. I wasn't prepared for it. And I'm waiting, and I'm just waiting for that gun to sound. And then it runners to your mark, get set, pow, the gun goes off, and I take off running. And I, and I, I don't know how to run this race except anything. I, I, I've never ran this, so I, I don't know the proper way to pace or what to do. I just say, coach wants me to run, I'm going to run. Run, Forrest, run. That's, that, that's, that's what I was doing. So I was in this place. I was running the race. I was running as fast as I could, as long as I could. And, and I, I passed the person who was in front of me. And, there, and I passed another person who was in front of him. And now all of a sudden, coming around the last corner, I realized I'm, 
I'm winning this, this leg of the race. And I start gaining separation, and I'm, I'm doing well. And I, I, I hand, the whole time I'm thinking I'm going to die, though, and I hand the baton off, and I can't talk. I go over to the inside. Our, our team ended up winning that race. But I'm, I'm on the infield, guys, ready to heave everything that was inside of me onto the field. I never felt this bad after running in my entire life. Guys, this tested me. But can I tell you, I realized, I realized on the other side of this testing that there was something in me that I did not know was there. It produced something. Come on, somebody. I'm just trying to draw a symbolism here as I'm landing this plane today. Whenever you are tested, we consider it joy, not because it's fun to go through it, but because God is faithful in the midst of it. As we as a community are going through this, I want us to know and to have a full assurance of hope that God in the midst of the fire, in the midst of the testing, will produce something in us, in our churches, in his bride that we didn't know was there. I'm telling you, we are in a season where people are feeling hopeless because they're realizing many of them for the first time and maybe you're one of them friend that you're not in control as much as you want to be you are not in control we spend our lives trying to be in that place where we can control make sure things are nice make sure they're exactly how we want them to be and we found out this week the control is not a luxury that you have all the time. For many, that can be a pretty hopeless place. I feel like the Lord is, is making a call, a clerical call to the ones who are hopeless. And it's up to us, church, believer, friend, Family, it's up to us to pick up the megaphone that he's giving and shout out and declare the reason we have hope is because we have something that is not temporal. We have someone who is eternal that saved us from death to life. And it doesn't matter what we face, we have a reason to hope. I believe that on the other side of this, that churches across the nation are going to be full again because because people are hungering for hope and right now they're hopeless. They're going to be looking for places where they can receive hope. And guys, we know the answer is in Jesus. Guys, let us be hope filled. Come on, somebody. Hope reveals opportunity. And here we go. The plane is landing. Hope flips the script. Whenever you are hope, Whenever you have hope in a hopeless situation, you will see opportunities to let your hope shine. Why? How can we be full of hope in a time like this? Because God's plan and his will has not changed. That's why we can be hopeful. Jesus said, hope says, because Jesus is hope, he says, Lord, let your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. I'm hopeful because his word is eternal. Right now, we're still waiting for the fulfillment of what Jesus prayed to come to pass. I'm hopeful because his word is eternal. Kingdom come is still his plan. Come on, somebody. Kingdom come is still his plan. That's a t-shirt right there. We're going we're gonna to get ready and we're going to be hopeful because his kingdom is still coming. So I can be hope filled. I'm filled with hope. Friends, in closing for real this time, don't let what we are facing in this season quiet your hope. Don't allow your perspective to get clouded. Jesus is still on the throne and therefore you have a reason to have hope. So here's your assignment.
for the next three weeks. We know that we're not going to be together in person for this Sunday and the next Sunday and the next. Pray with us, believe with us that we're able to come back together for Easter. Come on, somebody. But for the next three week, weeks, here is your assignment. Number one, write it down. Put it on Facebook. Number one is be a hope dealer. Be a hope dealer. That's what we're called to be. That means when you're on social media, don't give in to the hype to post negative things. Be people who post hope. Come on, somebody. Share hope. Wherever you go, be, be willing to share the reason you have hope in a time like this. Share things that bring hope on Instagram, Facebook, social media. When you see things that kind of spur your hope, share those things. People need to experience the hope we have. Deliver hope. Be a hope deliverer. Call people and give them a reason to hope. Secondly, pray. Pray from a place of hope. Align your prayers with faith and pray from heaven's perspective. God will see us through. Align your prayers with that hope. And three, keep your eyes fixed on Jesus, knowing that he is going to work all things out for your good. He's going to work all things out for our good. Friends, this day, I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful for what we will see on the other side of what we face. Let us be hope-filled believers. God is good. I'm excited about what we're going to see on the other side. Amen. Let's pray together, guys. Jesus, I'm thankful for you. Thank you, Lord, that you give us a reason to hope. I pray, Lord, that you, would, that you would help us fix our eyes on you, that we would catch heaven's perspective for what we see because help, hope changes our perspective. Hope empowers perseverance. I thank you, Lord, that even though we are in a time of testing, this testing will develop and produce something in us that will far outweigh anything that comes against us. Lord, you will be glorified through all of this. Hope reveals opportunities. So, Lord, show us the opportunities that we have to be hope dealers to the world around us. I love you, Father. Thankful for Thankful for your grace and your hope in my life. I pray for my church family. I pray for all of those who are watching right now. Bless them and keep them. Lord, we come against this virus and we say, be gone. And I thank you, Lord Jesus, for what we are going to see on the other side. We're hopeful. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.